Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you a fantastic game played between Soviet chess grandmaster Yefim Geller and the 5th world chess champion Max Ewe. This game is from 1953 Zurich candidates and Geller opened up with d4. Ewe's answer was knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, Nimzo Indian defense is on the board, e3, the normal line and Black hearted to undermine white center with c5, this is known as Hubner variation. As you know, an alternative is castling kingside. a3, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, b6. Uh, castling kingside or knight c6 remain popular alternatives, and this is a move recommended by Belgian champion O'Kelly de Galway. Bishop d3, bishop b7, then f3. White now wants to set up a massive pawn center and at the same time yes with f3 he neutralized opponent's light squared bishop both players castled kingside and black is putting his knight on the rim which is putting pressure on c4 and at the same time black is opening up the light squared bishop's diagonal knight e8 a nice defensive prophylactic move knight g3 c takes d4, c takes d4, rook c8, uh, attacking the pawn on c4, but instead of thinking about protecting it, or I don't know, playing c5, uh, giving up it by playing c5, and then activating the dark squared bishop, something which Stockfish suggests, Gettler chose a different option, and he played a4. He's hurrying to organize a kingside attack. So Black accepted the pawn sacrifice, f5, f6, rook f4. The pawn push allowed white to transfer his rook on the h file. b5, this is a strong move and here is what Bronstein writes about it. The start of a remarkable counter-attacking plan, the basis of which is black's advantage on the central squares. With b5, black is opening up the b6 square for the queen and at the same time is strengthening the knight. Rook goes on h4, meanwhile white is proceeding with the attack. This time we have e5, protecting the pawn and trying to open up the diagonals. This is another pawn sacrifice which black accepted and there we have it after f takes e6, the bishop's diagonal is open. Here black hurried to get rid of that bishop but now the queen is occupying that diagonal. Now if g6, then bishop h6 can be unpleasant. And if you think about saving this rook, then after an exchange on g7, white has a powerful knight f5 check, and white's attack looks unstoppable. That's why near black made a good decision and captured on e6, allowing queen takes h7 check. King f7, bishop h6, intensifying the pressure. And now a question arises, how can Black neutralize this scary attack? Here's Eva found a brilliant move and he played rook h8. Eva is making a rook sacrifice in order to deflect this queen and launch a counterattack. Uh, according to Stockfish, you can also play, for example, I don't know, rook c3, queen d5. But from a human perspective, this rook h8 is an amazing move, after which white has to be very careful. White has to play with Angie's accuracy, something which Geller failed to do. Kasparov gives this move to exclamation marks for the beauty idea and writes, Although analysts have shown that rook h8 was a premature idea, chess fans will find it hard to agree with this. Such moves are not forgotten. White accepted the rook sacrifice, otherwise if you move back your queen then just uh, rook takes h6 is winning. That's why we have queen takes h8 and there comes the rook. As the queen is deflected, black rook is coming after the pawn on g2. Rook c1. Uh, look, now the threat is Rook takes g2 check, followed by queen c4 check, and white king is getting checkmated. And 
With rook c1, white is like taking under control the c4 square after rook g2, king f1. There will no longer be queen c4 check. Turns out that this rook c1 took Gellert an hour to make, and at this point he came to the conclusion that his position is lost, an opinion shared by the other players and the general public. This game was the one most watched on the demonstration boards. But it turns out that there is a miraculous defense and white can survive actually. Let's first finish the game, there are a few more moves to go and then I will turn on Stockfish to see how can white save the game. Then came rook takes g2 check, king f1, queen b3. Of course white took under control the c4 square but now the queen is coming after white king from the third rank. Queen d3 or queen f3 are dangerous threats. White played king e1 but resigned after queen f3. White king is just getting checkmated, there is no defense. So I turned on Stockfish and I want to stop on some key moments, especially uh, on the key point of the game. So in here we first see rook h8, something which is Angie's third choice, but from a human perspective this is an amazing move, yes, after which white has to play with Angie's precision, something which Geller failed to do. Moreover, he was not under time pressure. He spent in here one hour but failed to find uh, d5. All hail to Geller's second Grandmaster Bondarevsky, who after the game in the evening during the analysis found this line, refuted rook h8. The idea is that now if bishop takes d5, of course not queen takes d5, because in this case it's white who is winning, uh, if bishop takes d5, then rook d1. With bishop d5, black blocked this diagonal. And now if check, then just king f2, king f1, and if here, then bishop d2. Also, rook d1 enabled white now to block the second rank with bishop d2, preventing a move like bishop g2 check. Uh, Ava disagreed with this line, saying that in here, instead of rook h2, he would play g takes h6, and if here, then queen takes d5, and it's black who is winning, but there is no win actually. Of course, black has a slight edge, but the fight goes on and it's unclear. This is a very complex position, of course. So, uh, one more thing which I want to show, instead of going d5, if you play, for example, rook d1 straight away, I want you to understand the difference, then rook g2 check, followed by queen b3 is winning. That's why you should make this d5 move in order to block the a to g8 diagonal as well. An amazing move, of course, and... Geller failed to find that move. Instead he played rook c1, which leads to a forced mate, yes. So this is it, dear chess lovers. Hope that you enjoyed the game. Feel free to share with your friends as well. And in the end, a chess puzzle where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.